Good evening, welcome to Easy 8 Online Painting Club. My name's Danny, says it right down at the bottom of the screen. You guys say that, Dan, we can hear you sniffing. There's a slight reason for that, I was trying to be funny. It's Friday the 13th, what could possibly go wrong? I haven't done any technical checkups or anything, uh, so I just thought I'd just push buttons and go for it, because if it's gonna go wrong, it's gonna go wrong, and there's very little I could do about it, so I just thought I'd try and be funny, but it clearly wasn't that funny. Anyway, look, guys, I hope you had a really good week. I I've had a fun week, I've had a nice Nice week. Um, I haven't got any painting done or anything like that um, because I've just been really tired. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's been like my first really kind of not busy week, but you know, like kind of I've been doing lots of jobs at work sort of thing since the Christmas holidays. The first few days back in were quite easy, but I think this week I've just been doing lots of physical labor stuff and I've just been coming home and falling asleep like 7 30 8 o'clock on the sofa so I've just had no real not time just no inclination or kind of energy to want to go ahead and do any painting this week um but that's okay you know I don't have to do those sorts of things it's nice sometimes to kind of do a little bit of work to kind of catch up from the previous week um but i'm going to be doing all of that pretty much um today so yeah if you're new here to easy eight we're not a tutorial show or anything like that at all. there's loads of that stuff already out there um i this is literally just a place where you can come along make some friends with these guys over here uh, hopefully a friend with me too uh just kind of have a social club paint all your models live with some company knowing that someone else out there is doing all that hard graft painting their plastic grey horde because we all have one mine i always say every week it's all around me um and you know it's just nice to be able to kind of do it with someone because sometimes it's difficult to get all of the um you know the motivation <laughs> so, i guess if we've got some guys joining us already in the live chat over here we got leslie greetings howdy doody do and hello peeps hi leslie nice to get nice to see you thanks for coming along and we've got stafford and we've got jeff hi guys <laughs> don't fart no 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 it's, it's okay i turned my microphone off and i was trying to make that light work over there i turned my microphone off and uh, back on i was just like boop, 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 boop. Nah, don't worry about it it's, it's absolutely fine hopefully i didn't like swear or anything like that because off the show i've got a sailor's mouth uh, and sometimes I don't know I'm doing it. I that <laughs> that would be embarrassing. I'll edit it if that's the case. I can edit it later on. Whatever. <laughs> Leslie says fart jokes. Fart jokes is a real sense of maturity. Yeah, man. Yeah. They, don't they say like having like a you know like a potty mouth and a bad sense of humour is actually indicative of intelligence? Um, hey, maybe I'm really smart. I don't think I am, but nah, maybe I'm making that up because I'm stupid as well. Um, if you like what we do here, and if you enjoy the company, if you you know just kind of like being a part of the you know, the community here, then please do consider subscribing to the show. Every little thing that you do helps me make a bigger thing on this end of it. We've recently had a couple more subscribers since the Christmas break. Uh, we went up to 77, then we went down to 76, and then we got back up to 77 again, which is nice. So I'm casting that as 78, though it is 77, and we've had a couple of new members that's great thanks for coming along guys thanks for subscribing welcome to the show i hope you get a lot out of it if you don't let me know how i can improve it i'm always looking to kind of do tweaks and things you know to kind of improve it so that it makes it better for you um they've also a couple of people have been over and joined the discord family over there so if you want to you can join me at the end of the show and um, come to the easy Eight after party because we're not just here on YouTube. I've got a like, hair in my nose. I have to scratch that. I'm going to hide behind the subscribe thing so you can't quite see it. There you go. Friday the 13th. What's the worst that can happen? Um, yeah, you can come and join me uh, on Discord. You can also come and find me on Instagram and on Facebook. Facebook's been really quite um, bright and bubbly lately. Lots of things going on over there. If you want to show photos of your stuff that you're working on, I genuinely, genuinely love to see what it is that you are working on. I'm not just saying that to kind of farm the likes. I actually do want to see what it is that you're working on. If you want to put pictures up on Facebook, for for some reason my facebook page for easy eight doesn't actually allow you to post but you can find this week's schedule um 
episode 103 and you can put it as a comment to that and that's what the guys have been doing um, every week and there's been some fantastic photos of stuff going up there um, we've had a couple of new members that have been putting some stuff over over on discord um, Freddy I absolutely love um, all your Gaslands cars they look fantastic well done and you've also got like an army of like dudes with guns and bazookas and stuff and you're going to be um, selecting 10 of them at random um, for a crew I'd like to know more about what this choice what this selection is all about um, because that sounds quite fascinating I don't recognize the models I to be fair only had a quick look um, just earlier on today because I didn't realize that you would actually joined the community on discord in, uh, on Sunday and of course I haven't been online since last week so apologies for not being there to greet you immediately normally I am there very very you know quick to respond I answer to, to all the things so you can talk to me here on YouTube Facebook if you want to even on Instagram because the Facebook and Instagram things are linked that's great um, and also a discord where I talk to people all the time so I'm, I apologize for not meeting you there um, directly welcome to the show and thanks for subscribing if you do like what we do tell other people share it as well kind of get the community out there we are growing and it's natural it's organic and I love it it's wonderful so welcome to the show I hope you get a lot out of it uh, Leslie says uh, as I'm actually painting I shall put some pics up great what is it that you're painting this evening do let me know drop it in over there in the comments um, and if you are you know one of those people that that watches it back on replay like john from out of this world models and minis hi john hi future john this is pastor danny saying hello because he won't be able to make it tonight he's going to watch it on the replay you can drop your comments down there in the comment section it's exactly what it's for anyway let's come away from here and we'll head on over to the workbench where maybe the camera is going to work or not on friday the 13th i'm going to stop milking that joke it's not even funny anymore so you can just see just off the camera over here i've got um Frank and Betty. Um, this is Frank. Um, Frank rhymes with shank. And he's got a big shank in the end of his gun. That's how I'm remembering them. And this one here is Betty. Um, Betty, we haven't been doing anything. Betty's just got all of her um, grey uh, parts blocked in. They're good to do the next part on. And I've just been working on the carapace here um, on Frank. Last week, you remember that I started putting in some black and some dark grey to blend those carapace sections in. Um, and then I'm also going to do some highlights as well. I was struggling a little bit last week. Um, and sometimes when I'm, when I'm on air, I feel like a little bit of pressure um, with the show to kind of do things well and do things fast. And I think it kind of ruins my attempts a little bit often what i'll do is i'll go onto discord after the show people come and join me over there i'll have a chit chat and i paint 10 times better um i'm you know i'm not a vain person at all that's why i look like i do um <laughs> but sometimes without the pressure of being on a live show i do paint a little bit better and what i was doing was actually having a chat with darren who isn't with us right now but might be a little bit later on um and as i was painting he's like man that's that's really good and we started talking about it thanks darren by the way that was really kind of you to say so because i didn't really like what i did very much um is rather than do black and then the dark grey, which I'll bring up a little bit closer, you can see. Wait for him to come into focus a little bit. Willy. There you go. Um, I actually started doing grey and then the black, and for some reason, it just worked a little bit better for me. It was hard to see when I painted the black already where the dark grey was starting, if I was starting in the black and then drawing out towards the light grey, or if I had them upside down, if I was starting in the light grey, I could see, but I couldn't quite see where it was finishing in the black. What I'm trying to do is get these, these stripes, these striations, to kind of create that sort of artificial... Um, sort of creases lines in the carapace like you know the sort of stereotypical cracked fingernail um sort of design we actually called it broken toenails a few episodes ago didn't we sorry frank i dropped you there um what i started doing a little bit further down the tail um is i started putting the dark gray on first as like a little band um halfway into the carapace plate itself um, and I practiced this on this plate here and it went much better and I actually I'm looking at the, the stripes now and I, I just prefer how I achieved it I can do better and the, how I can do better is by practicing and just basically getting better at mixing blends it's one of the things that I put up in the listing is just kind of talking about developing the smoothness of my paint mixes kind of getting good at the um, uh, mixing a paint that wants to transfer from the bristles of the brush onto the model if you just go straight from pot to miniature it doesn't really matter what brand it is it's probably not going to be um 
all that easy to do, especially with Citadel. Citadel make beautiful colours and they've got a really good range, but they are really, really thick and you have to water them down. You can water them down with water, obviously. You can do it with all sorts of different sorts of mediums. I've got here, I've got a, a retarder medium. Uh, this one here is it slows down the drying of the paint, so you've got a little bit more time to work with it. When I bought this one, I was hoping it was for my airbrush. It wasn't. It's kind of, it's like, almost like a jelly. Um, so yeah, this one's a little bit weird. I don't often use this one very much, but I'm going to have a little play with it maybe a bit later on as well. Um, you can use thinner. I've got airbrush thinner for kind of, you know, making your, airbrush, your paints and your airbrush move a little bit easier. I've also got airbrush flow improver. I rate this stuff. Um, I actually don't use airbrush thinner very much anymore. I mostly use this stuff. Because I use paints that are already thinned for my airbrush, um, I don't often have to use airbrush thinner. It depends if I get like a really thick paint or a primer, I might put a drop in. But this stuff really is worth it. And even though it's for the airbrush, you can still use it by brush. So I often will water my paint down with a couple of drops of this, maybe just the one, and that's often enough. And this particular liquid, this particular medium, just makes paint, stops it from binding to the bristle so much and allows you to kind of really transfer it um, off the bristles and onto the, onto the, onto the model itself. Um, it's quite hard to explain that if you don't really understand that it's, it's quite hard to explain it it's just one of those things that when you're painting sometimes you, you you're stroking away with you know the bristles on the brush and, it, and it's just not doing what you want it to do and um yeah this is one of those things that i found really really helpful if anybody's got any tips out there i am all ears i'm not a pro i say it, i say it all the time right i'm not a pro so if you've got like tips or whatever I'm, I'm really interested to hear about it so yeah go for it um some comments going in uh leslie says i am painting a cabalites cabalites i think that's how you say it cabal lights um nearly finished the first batch so we'll be painting more during the show excellent cabal cabal lights cabal lights i can't for some reason that's the word i can't say <laughs> i've never known i can't say that word i've never said it before cabal lights cabal lights someone at work can't say phenomenon <laughs> anyway um i think dark elder is that correct or that now they're called um something else now aren't they they are called dr not drutchy i can't remember what they're called now but i I can't say cover lights, cover lights. Ha! Anyway, let's get some paint out. I'm going to be using Eschen Grey. This is my dark grey. I really like this grey, but it is really, really thick. This week I won't throw it, even though it is Friday the 13th. I'm going to mix it up on my little Vortex mixer. Give it a waz on the old Wazomatic. You're welcome. Jeff says, I've had a day of it. Uh, this project is huge. Salute build, a build that you're making for Salute. I'm now making flower pots for it. Not normal ones, though. 1960s ugly ones that would be four foot across. But shh, top secret. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. Uh, when you say four foot across, four foot across in the miniature world? Because I think they're supposed to be small. Or is it if they were in real life, four foot across? Uh, staff says Dark Elves Drakari. Yes, you're right. Thank you very much, Drutchy. Uh, Drutchy, actually, I remembered it now. Drutchy comes from Drutchy Violet. Uh, yeah, that's that's why I had it in my head. Anyway, let's let's get rid of this. Where's my mouse gone? Ah, oh, do you remember what I was saying earlier on? If it was going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong. Get away off the screen. Thank you. Uh, staff's not painting anything this evening. Reading a book. I hope you're not reading too much and being distracted and listening to my lovely voice. Drakari, my friend. And the first one is how I pronounce it. Uh, no idea if I'm pronouncing it wrong myself. Drakaria, Drakari, warrior, space elves of nastiness. Yeah, cool. Drakari. Cabalites. <laughs> Cabalites. Right. So, I've got a couple of brushes here. Uh, oops, I've got my number two. And I've got my zero. I'm actually thinking about getting a smaller one. I've been buying a few tools recently. I've got some really rubbish tweezers. John from Out of This World Models and Minis was like, you can get the tweezers that do the clamping thing. So I bought some. They came in the post today. Um, so yeah, these are some tweezers that John suggested. I used to have a pair, uh, much smaller with a needle nose. He's got a flat grip. But these are ones that mean that you don't have to press to hold for ages. I was struggling a few episodes ago. So I got those. Thanks for the suggestion, John. I'm one of those people that won't buy the thing unless you tell me to buy the thing. So yeah, thanks for telling me to buy the thing. I've now bought it. Um, yeah. I've got a, a pair of um, needle nose tweezers coming in um, because the tweezers that I've got are probably all older than me and the, the 
points on them aren't really doing their thing anymore for me, so this will be useful for, you know, stuff. But, yeah. Right, I'm gonna leave that paint there. I've got a little bit of paint on my palette, just over here. Here it is. You can't really see it for the colours that are all over my palette. People complained about the state of my palette. I'm gonna leave it, sorry. I'm just gonna put one little drop of this on there. There we go, and I've got to mix that all in now. I'm going to use... Uh, where's my mixing brush? Here it is. My mixing brush is just all knackered on the an old synthetic brush. Um, I use it for mixing things in my airbrush or on my palette, just like this. So I'm just going to mix my um, flow improver into that. I don't really know what flow improver is, what m makes it do its thing. Uh, flow improver just allows the paint to... It stops it from drying, I think. It must be some sort of paint retarder, but it stops it from clinging on the inside of the airbrush, and you can get retarders for brush as well. It stops it from clinging on the bristles. Um, yeah, I, I don't really know how it works. I did watch a video where they explained it, and my synapses melted and fell out through my tear ducts, and I stopped listening to that, so I tried. Anyway, um, I'm going to go in with the dark grey here, just to kind of neaten up what I've already done uh, and to kind of do the plate that I've missed. I've got a plate here in the middle and of course it's not just the back, I've got to do the legs, I've got to do the feet, uh, I've got to do the head which is going to be a tricky one to do but I'll try my best and I've got some on the gun here. It's a long haul, it's one of the harder things to do um, in terms of my technique, my style but it's worth it because when it's done it looks super cool. More comments going in. Uh, Lizzie says, that sounds really cool, Jeff. Hope it goes well for you. Uh, cheers. It's not fun, though. But it's, I've seen it. It looks cool. It's going to look really sweet when it's done. Um, a proper difficult build for yourself. But considering your work, I'm pretty sure it's going to be another cool piece. Ah, sharing the love. That wasn't like, you know, paid for or anything. <laughs> <coughs> pay you five pounds if you say this. <laughs> what was it? So, even though I've done these bits up here, I wasn't particularly happy with them. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to beef them up a little bit. Because if I'm putting the grey on first, the dark grey, then when I put the black on, I can break it up a bit more. I was trying to get these like really perfect, thin, dark grey lines in and work from the black down to the highlights. It just wasn't doing it. So, put the grey on first, and then I do the, the effects with the black and then the lighter grey. Well, I say the lighter grey, this is the medium grey, the base grey here. Kind of blend it all together and then do my highlights over the top and that really sets it all off already better there then okay what I'm trying to do is get my brush loaded but not overloaded and make sure that I've got a fine point on the brush if I've got too much paint in there while it holds a lot which is great it um, bulges the bristles a bit too much and I lose that point and um, yeah I don't want that a weird thing going on here. I'll sort that out in the future, I think. Just kind of a pointy bit sticking out. I don't even know what's going on there. Okay, whatever. So Friday the 13th. Anything happened to anybody today? I'm not a superstitious person myself. I don't do horoscopes. I don't do superstitions. If I see a ladder, I deliberately walk under it. I can't help it. <laughs> But they do say that full moon does bring out weird behaviours for some reason. There's been like studies done, isn't there? On full moons, human behaviour for some reason does go erratic. I think there is any correlation to it necessarily, uh, or any any cause or effect. It just it just happens to be. Nothing proven anyway. Yeah, 
paint is not coming out of my bristles, come on. I'll put a bit of water in there to loosen it up a little bit. It's like I've got no paint in the point of my brush. And now I've got too much. I've got no point in there. Hmm. What's my problem? been one of those weeks this week you know for me it's been like a really weird week but I say I've been really struggling earlier on in the week with just energy levels and stuff I've been really looking forward to coming back into the into the workshop I'm calling it the workshop it's the studio don't know why I call it the workshop but you know just to kind of get to the bench here and just do some stuff man Okay, I'm a bit happy with that now. I'm hoping that with the next grey, and the, I'll come back to the black as well, I'll be able to better achieve the sort of pattern that I'm, I'm looking at here. And again, even though I'm pretty happy with how this looks, I just want to make it a little bit more... Well, it's a bit better. <laughs> just want to improve it a little bit. It's a bit too neat and tidy. But again, I'll come back with the medium grey and uh, it will look better. Um, Jeff says, you can't have too many tweezers. I've got loads on the workbench. That's why I can't find them as they're under pot of crap. <laughs> uh, Leslie says, no, I'll happily say it for free. As I think his work is genuinely that good. I own a Nurgle tree that he made me. It is awesome. You should pop a picture of that up on Facebook, mate. It's, it is really cool and really different from what he normally builds as well. Okay, I think I've got my paint to a mix where I'm just dipping the point into it. Um, and that seems to be going well, a little bit like an old quill and ink. Normally I kind of like dip my brush into it and then kind of roll it around, find the point. But if this is going to work, while it's not traditional, it's quicker. Oh my goodness, okay, cool. That's a game changer. Yep, yeah, well, if that's working for me, that's working for me, right? <laughs> Don't fix it if it ain't broke. So, the problem I have with the top plates is that there is no plate above it. Obviously, it's the top plate. So, my pattern has a black line that signifies the edge. It makes, because of the contrast is so strong, there'll be a highlight edge on that top plate, for example. Stands out against the dark edge of the top of the next plate down, if that makes sense. Um, but because there's no top edge up there, there's no black. So what? how do I do this? Do I just put grey right at the top? That's what I'm thinking about doing. In the past, you can see that I've struggled because with my Khan effects here, um, you can see that I've just kind of done some grey pattern around these areas here. It looks okay. I don't really know what I was trying to do. Um, and I highlight it at the edges of the front of the carapace. What I'm thinking about doing is using this dark grey doing some streaks back and then highlighting the edge of it with no black that's what I'm thinking but down on the tail section down here there's like the start over again it's like two separate sections you've got the top part and you've got the bottom part so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a little practice I'm gonna basically just paint a nice widish sort of line across the top here just to kind of block that dark color in and then from here, I'm going to draw some, some stripes backwards. Very much like what I've just done already. And then I'll, I'll, I'll highlight it back in. And it should, in theory, look quite cool.
bit tricky. Just in behind this thigh plate here. So I'm just going to try and just colour around there and hopefully it sort of does the job concealed conceals my sort of deliberate error really when I'm feathering some of these lines I'm deliberately making them random so occasionally I'll go in and make like a random one a bit longer something like that light shining on it, I can't really see this. One of the problems of painting in the studio is that sometimes the, the lights are so good that um shines off the wet off the wet paint. Okay. Just gonna stretch this one down a little bit here. Nice, okay. So actually we're almost done here, aren't we, on this on this tail section here, this little bit area. And then <laughs> this little bit of area. <laughs> uh, and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll practice what I'm talking about on the front. And if I ruin it, I ruin it. I can always go back and paint over it. No no biggie. There's hardly any detail here. Oh, oh I might I frame it a bit, there's hardly any detail on the top here. Um, so I can always, you know, kind of go back over it. Cat hair in my mouth. I haven't even picked the cat up today. <laughs> Why is this happening to me? <laughs> First I've got one in my nose, now I've got one in my mouth. Crazy. Yeah. What would the show be without a cat here? So these little tail sections here, if you can see, they're getting quite small, so it's actually quite difficult to kind of get that feathery line in. So I, I just try to do as much as I can and I just make the occasional point out of basically as a feathered band and then I, again I'll come back in with a mid mid grey and I'll, I'll redefine it and then I'm going to put the black at the top of it in a bit Something like that. Cool. I'm going to wash my brush out. You should always wash your brush. Uh, <laughs> consider it done, says Leslie. Cheers, man. It'd be nice for the community to see that Nurgle tree. It's really, it's different. It's nice, you know, it's cool. Um, Jeff says, Oi, Paul's War Game Show is on on the 4th and 5th of February. Want to go? Yes, I do. Um, I know that I am going to Torquay on the 2nd. I think I'm available for those dates. Um, I go to Torquay because at the beginning of the year I always do a lot of training for my job and I move around to different locations across the country, Torquay, uh, down in South Devon, um, being on the opposite side of the county of me, being the closest one where I go, I go quite a lot. Um, I don't think I have any more commitments on those days. So actually, Paws is a really good one to go to. If anyone's interested in Paws, especially if you live locally or near where I live, down here in the southwest of the UK, it's in Plymouth. Um, that's why it's called PAWS, uh, P-A-W-S, the Plymouth Amateur War Game Society. Um, it's small, it's humble, uh, but it's still really good. It's very exciting, lots going on. In, in a, it is a large hall, but it's actually quite a small convention or, or war game show compared to lots of others that kind of are out there. Um, so if you fancy like a short trip out for the day, um, it's a great one to go to. Uh, me and Jeff, because Jeff is my dad. Hi, Dad. Uh, we I've been there several times, and I don't get bored of it. It's it's a really good one to go to. It's a really nice vibe. It's really easy to find, um, and I've been there loads. So if you want to go um, as a community thing, let's let's do it. Let's do another Easy Eight road trip. Let's get a few of us down there. That'd be great. Cool. 
pause. That's where I first found what a tanker. But actually, that's that's a bit of a lie. It wasn't what a tanker. That's not that's not the game that I found down there. I found tanks, which is um, a, a game just with tanks made from the Flames of War um, sets. 15 millimeter um, tank war games. Right, I'm a bit nervous about putting this on, so I'm just going to go for it because I could be sitting here for ages. Otherwise, I've got some paint. I'm gonna spot. Oh, look! I've done it! I've done it! I've done it! <laughs> so what I'm looking to do, I suppose, is just bring some streaks back here. Yes, yeah, something like that. I don't want to go too mental. I like this, the, the lighter colour being a sort of dominant colour, or, or shade if you like, out of these greys. Try not to get too hooked up on the curve. Nice big open space to practice on, which is why I really was looking forward to these particular minis. And I'm deliberately leaving these brush strokes quite feathered because it's kind of helping me out plot where my random lines are going to go so I'm just the paint's running out of my brush you can see it's getting quite it's being it's being dragged a little bit that's cool that's helping just making sure that I get all of that edge and I'm bringing it back a little bit now I'm trying to bring in that curve a little bit especially over the shoulder because I want it to kind of follow down that contour there but I've got a larger space to cover here so actually I think I want to be bringing that back a bit more Let's get a bit more paint on my brush If this works, this is the solution to this problem that I've been looking for on all of my miniatures up to this point, all of my tyranny miniatures anyway. And it's one of those um, things that goes to tell you that it doesn't matter how long you've been painting a particular army or type of model, that sometimes you don't work out how you actually want to do it until quite a way in. So you do get this sort of progression of skill and development within in your armies and I find that quite frustrating if I'm really honest I was I was genuinely gonna lie on air then I was gonna say I find that really exciting um, no that's that's a load of rubbish I find it really frustrating uh, yeah there's a little OCD in me that says go back and redo everything and make everything equal but there is a certain charm in being able to see how far you've come isn't there And now what I'm trying to do is just neaten up the fact that it now all looks like crappy sort of brush strokes. I don't want it to be a straight line going off over here. Like I say, I want to bring these bits, I want to bring them down a bit. Struggling with them. The, the dragging of the paint there, so I'm just adding a bit of water. There's there's plenty of flow improver in there, but I might have to add a bit more to it than that. It might be that I need to add a bit of varnish to the top of my model to kind of smooth it out a little bit, perhaps, who knows? Or perhaps I just need to in increase the size of my brush. Just 
which I think is the tip of this brush. For some reason, it doesn't like drawing things in a fine point. I'm going to go to my number one. It's got a bit of um, uh, sort of gel in it, which kind of holds that point while I'm not using it. So I just wash that out. There we go. That was nice. Seems to have a better point on it. Let's see what this one does. smooth the brush. Strange. I will come in neaten it up with a medium grey as well. Well, looks kind of cool. Looks a bit jaggedy at the moment, doesn't look very natural, but I'm sure I'll get better at it. Gonna add a bit of paint here and gonna stick some flow improver in there, see what that does. Just a drop. Leslie playing for team cats there. They are lovely creatures, adorable, but the hairs really do get everywhere, literally every yeah, yeah. In fact, you know my current cats, they're nowhere near as bad as my other cat who passed away beginning of last year. She, um, yeah, it was a long, long haired, fluffy white cloud thing. Uh, it, it was just everywhere, just everywhere. And these two cats, it's just because there's two of them. And they, they don't like being brushed, so um, I can't keep on top of their grooming. They groom each other and, and themselves all the time, as cats always do, but yeah, I can't help that process. They fight the brush. So, yeah, it's just as fluffy as it ever was in this house. Okay, so got a bit more paint here. Might have a bit too much flow improver in there. Let's see what happens. Nice and smooth. Maybe a bit too watered down. Whatever though. Mix a bit of neat paint into it straight away there. That's a bit better. real learning curve. I like learning, but sometimes you just want to be able to just do it, right? Go for a slightly neater mix of paint. I hate to say it, it's actually working. You know me, I'm always about watering everything down. I definitely have to come back in with some of the lighter grey.
what I'm trying to do is get these really nice sort of lines that don't have any flicks. They're just nice and tidy lines. They don't look like brush strokes. What happens is I do that, the, the lighter grey is left behind looking really rubbish. So I'm trying to find this like, balance, this happy medium between the two. And it's difficult, basically. <laughs> That's how that story goes. It's hard. Just hoping that with lots of practice, it just becomes second nature. But it just fights me a little bit. And it can, it can be quite, it feels quite counterproductive. That's a bit better, isn't it? It's that big square grey bit right there. That light, of course, it's a grey bit. I'm painting grey, but that light grey bit there. Just trying to break that up a little bit like that that's that's a bit better okay not entirely happy with it but it's it's not bad it's it's okay right i feel that i should come back a bit further so i i will Okay. Not what I thought it was going to look like. Yeah, something like that. Something. Hopefully, it will look cool. It looks a little drawn, you know? It looks a little um, clumsy. Okay, that looks a bit better. Just being a bit more careful now, I think. love to know your thoughts on it let me know what you think <laughs> Stafford's already jumping in there looking good uh, that's gonna work nice I think mate thanks very much I hope so I I'll highlight the top edge a little bit which is why I was trying to bring that dark grey back a bit further so it's not all crammed in on the top edge and I'll obviously bring some highlights into it as well especially along this bottom edge which should kind of I know help with that I hope um, yeah, I still feel like I want to try and bring these bits down a bit more. All looking a little... Um... Yeah, she looks a little amateur, and I, and I will get better at this. Just 
try and narrow up all the lines a little bit, make them look a bit tidier. And random, the random thing really goes a long way to selling how genuine it looks, you know. I just think that grey, that light grey line there probably just starts a little bit too early. So if I just brought that in a bit better and then just pointed out the, the light a light grey end. Just here. Make sure that I'm actually in the shot. What happens then is the base of this dark grey section gets wider so it makes you want to do a longer line. That's fine. Looks like some sort of monochrome flame design, and that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. All right, that's that's cool. Do you know what I want to do? I want to kind of move away from the the dark greys here. I want to catch up with the blacks down there, but I'm also before I start doing this pattern on any of the other plates all over him, I kind of just want to see how it works with the highlights in there. I'm I'm interested in seeing a little bit of progress, and I think that will happen um, if I move on to the lighter greys. So I'm going to have a go at highlights right now. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. Because sometimes, just do it. Okay, moving on to Dawnstone Grey. This is a really nice colour. No, not Dawnstone. Not Dawnstone. Actually moving on to Administratum. Uh-oh, it needs mixing. Don't launch it across the room. Don't launch it across the room. Don't launch it across the room. Excellent. Time for that wasmatic. Give it a waz. How's everybody else's projects going? I feel like I've been a bit quiet there. You know, tongue poking out in the corner of my mouth, trying to focus and concentrate. How, how are your projects going? Are you having a bit more luck than I am? I think it's going okay. Just a bit slow while I sort of learn to refine my process. I always feel like I'm refining, refining, refining. <laughs> Waz it! You are welcome. <laughs> the Waz. Itchy eye and itchy ear. Better. Don't launch it. Don't do it. It's one of those days where I'm going to get paint all over the thing, isn't it? Does staff want to go to pause? I don't know. Staff, do you want to go to pause? It is good fun. It's a nice, nice one to go to. Right. Highlight colour. I'm going to make sure I move away from the darker grey there. I'm not going to actually walk this down. Um, part of the whole, the whole evening was talking about making sure I get the mixtures right, but actually, it might just I might just get good coverage if I don't. So low. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to paint a little line all the way along. I don't go too far with it. Make sure I'm in shot. I don't want you to miss out on what I'm doing. My ear is itching again. There we go. Uh, and then I'm going to skip out those little lines. I'm going to go to just down here. Like that. And I'm going to do just a little bit around the corner here. I don't like squared edges, so I always, oh, sorry, squared corners. Just round them off a little bit. Nice. <laughs> and 
now with these little splits what I like to do as always is paint the, the edges of these got a really nice fine point on my brush now hardly any paint in there come on Paint the edges of them and then bring the edges to the point to the tip of that bit there looks like a porridge oat and then what I do is like from the tips I draw another line and I follow the direction of the split I just kind of elongate it a little bit and now because it just looks like a blip with a line coming out of it I just try to make it all look like a blended triangle again not too much paint on my brush something like that looks a little uneven on this side here so I'm just going to try and tidy that up get a bit of paint in there come on now and now I try to just bulk up the other side but it's a little bit difficult because there is a little little crease in there I seem to have lost actually under that light grey so I think I've just got to leave it I'm never going to get that back again ever so slightly have followed a curve to follow the curving of the plate um, so what I want to do now is make lots of other highlighted lines that follow in the same direction but I like the splits that are modeled into the carapace I like them to be the largest ones so I want to make sure that this travels a decent distance without going too far because it looked like it would just fall off otherwise splits all the way over and it you know would break that's looking cool and now what I'm gonna do is all the way along is just do little little dashes little lines out not as much as I have done with the darker grey and I'm trying to follow in where the, where the light grey lines are you can see that they come out naturally because I've painted the dark grey lines up I've got these mid grey lines kind of going down that way so I try to follow them in a little bit because I want them to basically mirror the mid greys to make it look like all those striations are kind of going that way
paintbrush is getting a little bit built up there. little bit of water just to keep the bristles of my brush moist that does help the transferring of the of the paint can you see how also i've got because i've got this line that goes along and then i've got these little lines coming down they look square against each other so they make a, like a little um, right angle in the middle that is the bit that I try to soften out when I go back in to make them look a bit more opaque. By building the bases up as well, makes them look a bit more split-like. It's very easy to go too far. Low process, but when you start getting it, really satisfying. You see how I'm actually brushing on and my bristles are just kind of bending and nothing's coming off my um, off of my paintbrush. It's uh, frustrating and that, that's what I'm talking about, is trying to work that blend out so that it comes off on, onto the model straight away. I don't know, I mean I probably have run out of paint on the palette there which is absolutely fine. Anyway. It's time to have a quick break because I've been working hard away over here. I haven't even had a single, a single sip of my tea, which is behind me because it's Friday the 13th. Uh, and just all of the things that are going to go wrong are just going to go wrong, right? <laughs> uh, yes, let's move... Oh, where's my mouse? Here we go. Let's move away from here for a second. And we'll just um, we'll just read those. Comments are just going in. Uh, oh, it's uh, just Leslie making me feel good about myself. Dude, that looks cool. Thanks very much. Ha <laughs> ha, you said funny words. What words? What did I say that was funny? I hope I didn't swear at you. <laughs> uh, when these two are done, how many bugs can you field on the table? Too many, says Steph. Um, as many as I like, really. Uh, that's Yeah, I, I can do what I want. Uh, I can take what I want. Obviously, the more I have, uh, the, the longer the game takes, the more that my opponent might want to take against me. Uh, what is really good is that um, for the last several editions that they've had this thing where they don't just use points anymore. You still can use points, so you can work out, you know, what you want to take and how much your opponent can take and make it a bit more fair that way um there's something called power which is basically it's, it's, the, it's a it's a larger number so for every like um so it's a smaller number so for like every 100 points you might own you know you might only have like five ten points or power on the table but there are approximations and it basically means that i could go i'm going to take these two bugs and a load of critters and that would be 15 power and that means that arbitra almost arbitrarily someone like staff could come along and go okay i've got 15 power marines um but they might not be so well um you know opposed they, they might not be so equal which i think better reflects war anyway because war is always unfair for one side than the other um but also you don't actually have to match that you can just go okay i've got 15 power i've got 10 um and if that happens you get certain benefits so you get these little cards that they kind of give you like little strategic boosts and things and that makes a lot of difference and it's actually quite fun because you don't know what your opponent's taking oh, i've got a, a good little blend going on there that's nice I'm just doing these tiny little micro cracks at the at the the base here, and it just fills it out a little bit. Stop makes it stops it from looking so um, so so lacking, I suppose. Just these big empty voids. You want lots of detail to go in, but it doesn't need to be crazy detail. I'm just adding water into my paint there, just a little bit, just to keep that 
move in a little. If I load my brush up too much, I get too much in there and it just kind of bulges out the bristles and you end up getting this big watery mess. So I'm, I'm trying to be careful with how much I put on. That's a nice smooth line there. Again, round that corner off. That, I think, looks really quite cool. A little too obvious, maybe. I don't know. Um, yeah, still looks cool, though. Just trying to soften that little termination edge out on the end of that little highlight just there. What I mean by termination in point is like it just went it kind of uh, if this paintbrush was the line I painted it just went and it just kind of ended abruptly so I was trying to like soften the end out a little bit if that makes sense. <laughs> uh, Leslie says no no swear words just a certain word taken out of context because I'm all times of mature. <laughs> yeah it's fine. Yeah okay cool. Oh, I think it looks all right. What do you guys think? Does it look all right? Do you like it? I think that looks pretty pretty neat doesn't it? what I'll do in a minute to really kind of lessen this grey down is I'll bring the dark, sorry, the mid, the mid grey, I'll bring it back in the end and do like a little highlight on there as well and see what that looks like and hopefully it doesn't look poo. Anyway, in the meantime, I'm going to quickly go away for a break, I'm going to go drink some of my tea, I might even go pour myself a beer and hopefully um, I won't, you know, do anything bad on Friday the 13th. See you in a minute, go change your paint water, bye bye. Just kidding.
welcome back i was desperately trying to think of other funny things i could do coming back and pretending my cameras weren't working but do you know in the past i've had so many problems with my cameras i didn't feel like that that was funny <laughs> so i didn't do any more jokes um cool i do you know i didn't even leave the chair i was actually just kind of knuckling down trying to perfect this this process it looks really good i feel like i've got a long way to go still and it's kind of it's, it's a brain ache like it looks okay it looks a little rubbish i don't know do you know what i'm just going to take you straight over there and have a little look so you guys can tell me what you think about it in the meantime if you're new here just don't forget that you can subscribe to this channel and that if you did i would appreciate it so please share the word of easy a let a friend know maybe you're not interested in yourself but you know someone who who would like to see it um tell them about it and tell them to subscribe subscribe anyway maybe you will like it maybe it's like hanging out with us maybe maybe you don't Anyway, let's go back to the workbench and have a little look what I'm doing over here. So, um, yeah, so you can see that I've done all the highlights here. I've got a load of paint on my brush. I'm going to try not point with it too much. Point with the other end. So I've done all the highlights here. I feel like I could probably bring those highlights in a bit more. I over pronounce my H highlights. I think I can do more with them. So I'm going to. They're a little too edgy at the moment. But they do look really good. I'm just waiting for the camera to focus. Any seconds now. <laughs> there it is. Do you see what I mean? A bit too on the edge over there. I can do more with them, so I'm going to bring them in. And I've started to now with this uh, sort of mid grey, is feather that edge back in. Looks a little bit better over here. Uh, I've just kind of plotted it, and I'm going to do some smaller spikes, if you want to call them spikes, lines coming back in and then I can highlight just on the edge. So at the front here, it's much more minimal than what it is on the back edge over here. That's what I'm trying for. That's that's what I'm going to go for. And then of course, that's just on the top plate. Everything down here is just all smaller, so it would work much better. Um, I've got a lot of paint here. I was halfway through mixing when I came back in from the, the intermission there. Um, so yeah. Hope your projects are going well. This is going well. I feel that I'm learning a lot here. Like I, I'm kind of, I really do feel like I've, um, that I'm working out what I want, what does look good, what doesn't look good. So while I don't feel like I'm getting stuff done, um, I am doing things. A bit too much paint on my brush. Making it a bit heavy handed there. Still a bit too much. That needs to just be washed off. That's just face facts. Always clean your brush, folks. I just remembered that you guys were talking about trying to get staff to go to the Plymouth Amateur War Games Society. Let's have a little look up. See what I can. Did did I miss something there? Staff says, maybe Kimberly is away one weekend soon. I will find out. <laughs> For the love of God, just say yes. <laughs> Question mark, yes? Yeah, you should come along, man. It's good fun. It's good to see. Uh, Lizzie says, oh, I put some pics of the cab lights. Cabal lights. I finished, plus a picture of the Nurgle tree. Yeah, just during the break, I saw a load of, I got a load of flashes on my watch and on my phone right beside me here. Uh, I saw it all come up. So thanks for that. It's really good for all the other guys out there to, you know, see that wonderful tree. And the work that Jeff has done. It's really weird calling you Jeff. Dad. <laughs> okay, that looks cool. I hope you can see that. Yep, I like that. That looks really good. I suppose what I'm trying to do is not make it look like it's markings, like a tiger's stripe or something like that, but trying to make it look like that it's, you know, just the lines. Darren explained it last week on Discord with me as um, creating some creating textures, three-dimensional things on a two-dimensional surface, giving the illusion of additional detail. 
couldn't have said it better myself, to be honest. I tried, of course, and ruined it. I'm actually pretty happy with that. I'm just going to wet the end of the brush and just neaten up a couple of those points on there. Specifically, just this one here. My concentration voice there. <laughs> well, I don't say a thing. <laughs> you guys just end up having to watch me. Um, Jeff says, "Staff, the last time we went to pause, uh, a guy was selling a lot of 15 millimeter tanks cheap. Maybe Staff can sell his tanks because <laughs> he has a lot of them too." Just saying. True, and they were all uh, painted as well. He was a professional painter, and he just had them um, alongside a lot of his other stuff, and he was selling them off really cheap, and by the end of the day, he was just trying to get rid of them. He might have more this time. Okay, I feel like on this top plate, I could come back to it over and over and over again. Um, so I'm quite keen to not do that, really. I'm going to add some points and stuff over here. I'm trying to copy the lines, not copy them, copy them, but sort of roughly follow them. I need a bit of water in that, just a smidge. Remember, I'm not trying to go crazy on this leading edge with this um, this pattern. Just trying to highlight the edge and just make it look a bit more interesting. I've done all the detail bits. I don't want massive lines coming off of it. This is literally just to highlight the edge and make it look a bit more fun.
Lots of struggle. Lots of struggle. Okay, cool. Jeff says, I can't make these chuffing flower pots. Given up. Stupid model. Can you, can you describe the flower pots? Are, are they a simple design and it's frustrating you that they're simple? Are they awkward? Are they a weird sort of shape and design? What is it that's making you go and get upset about it? That makes you swear on my show. I don't consider that swearing. Say chuff all you like. Mm -mm -mm. That is a cold cup of tea. I should have taken that down from the microwave. Yes, I'm one of those people. I will microwave a cold tea um, because I don't like to waste it. <laughs> I'm going to get back to my highlight colour, which I don't have an awful lot left off there on my palette. So, what's the problem with the pots in general? But yeah, you've got people interested now. What's your flower pot plight? Do tell. bristles get rid of that cat hair that was gonna end up somewhere on my model or in my mouth okay wash the brush out there we go So, let's just, again, literally, trying to highlight this leading edge here. Probably should have started on the other side, because it would match what I've done over there. But hey, I've started putting it on now, right? I'm tempted to do the, the line that I like to do and then do striations, but this is in such a small area here that I'm... I don't think I really have the space for it, so I'm literally just dabbing it on and, and making little little lines as I do it. Where I've got a bit more space in this area here, I just dab on a bit further. That looks pretty cool, I suppose. Just, actually, I'm using the, the shape of the brush to kind of give me the shape of the highlight. point a bit that sticks out over there which I'm quite keen to highlight in total looks right doesn't it Looks a little clumsy, maybe, but I, I quite like it. So at work today, I've been doing a lot of plastering overemphasizing some of my letters here plastering I've been over <laughs> I've been working some plastering um, because I can plaster I'm not a professional but you know I'm good enough and me and my friend have been plastering an old doorway over we don't want the doorway anymore my hands have been covered in plaster and you know dusty stuff my hands are a bit awful dry so when I got home I had a shower as you do I moisturize my hands not something that I normally do I'm an outdoors worker I have rough hands my hands will feel good, but that and my hands smell awful. <laughs> As I'm sitting here working, I'm like, Ugh, it's, uh, I don't like it at all. So if I'm pulling a face, <laughs> if, you, if you can see it, yeah.
What do you think? Uh, but do you know what I mean? A bit clumsy, right? A bit clumsy. But I think eventually it'll it'll go somewhere. Waiting for it to focus. Come on now. There. So on the bottom edge over here, I'm gonna bring that that highlight color up more and make it a bit more not dominant, but just bring it into the limelight a bit more, I think. And see how that see how that works. Some more comments going in. Uh, Jeff says 1960s. They're just a hex shape that curves up and around the edge. Simple, yeah. Now try to make six of them all the same 20 millimeters across. Fresh eyes tomorrow. Yeah, something's just got to walk away from it, haven't you? More paint from the pot there. There we go. Okay, do you know what? I think I'm using a slightly too big a brush here. Let's go down to the smaller. I've got my zero. Here we go. Let's go back to this bad boy. A bit of water in the bristles. A bit too much. Dried it off. I didn't expect to be spending so much time on this on this pattern tonight. Having, you know, done the pattern before, I thought I'd have it kind of cracked, but for some reason I'm finding a bit of a block on it. I'm enjoying the process, but it feels a bit backwards because I've I've already done this before, you know. It just feels weird. It just feels wrong. Right. So I'm going to try and not ruin the pattern that I've got on here, um, but I've got to try and bring it forwards. I think what I need to do is I need to work out what order the colors go down so it might be worth on plates that are on the top where I'm kind of doing this thing on both ends is actually just start with a highlight and work my way to the dark one so all of my lines go in the same they all sort of work each other at the moment I've got light and dark lines facing each other and that doesn't um, it's not conducive to this sort of you know uh, it should have a really light line, which is then you know, goes into a, a, a mid-tone line, and it should follow the same thing, and then it should you know go into the dark bits to kind of um, suggest that this is a crack. That the higher up it goes, the darker it gets. But at the moment, I've just kind of got all these zigzags, and they're not really showing anything um, as what I've done in the past. So yeah, I think it's about working out what order I put all this stuff on. What I'm going to do at the moment, Liz, I'm just going to Basically, I'm just going to brush this highlight color in. Being quite brutal with it, I think I just need to rip that band-aid off. Let's just get in there a second. Just paint this line in. Bit of a shame that I'm going to kind of cut up close to this split here, but you know, I, st I still can make that line nice and long to say that it's a part of it. That's fine. Don't want to come too far down the edge here. I want closer to the end down here. I still want it to be quite a narrow band. Okay. Solidifying the opacity there. I don't want to be able to see through this grey. So go back over with a second coat. Allowing the bristles to run a bit free. They they add some sort of random lines in sometimes that could be quite handy. Okay, it's still not completely opaque. That's that's fine. I expect that at this stage. Um, you can still see where some of my lines are initially through there. That might help me. Who knows? But what I'm going to start doing now, now that I've got this thick edge here, is I can now start bringing some lines in. And I'm going to try my best to follow these, these mid-grade spikes, if that makes sense. So, let's get some paint on my brush. I'm going to start on this second mid-grey spike because it's a bit easier to kind of reach at the moment. So I'm just going to start here using what's already there actually. Didn't really follow that very well, just going to rub that out. I can't, okay, cool. <laughs> let's, 
empty my brush out. I don't like what's on there. Oh, doesn't want to go. Do you know what? If you don't want to go, I'm not going to fight you. I'm not going to ruin it. I'm not going to make my life difficult just because. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the mid grey again to neaten that up and, and make it do what I want it to. That's looking a little bit better, isn't it, I think? That is much better. I'm really, really happy with that. I can still neaten up the lines a little bit. I, I will be neatening up the lines, and I'll probably be doing that for a couple of days, I reckon. Every time I get a bit bored with some part of the paint job, I'll probably come back to this part and just do a bit more, a bit more, etc, etc. I could even, if I wanted to, get a really, really light version of grey, add 50% white to it, maybe, and just really pick out that edge, almost like what I had a minute ago, but really going down to that fight, and only do that on this top plate, just to really... Um, sort of exaggerate this top plate's highlights because there's a lot going on and it's just a big open flat space and it looks boring it needs something on there I'm starting to feel a little bit invigorated by this I'm starting to feel a little bit a little bit beat by it to be honest and that's the reason why I have this show you guys help me feel much better about what it is that I'm doing. You throw me a lot of suggestions. A lot of people come on Discord after the show, talking to me about things, suggesting things, helping me through it, helping develop. Um, yeah. I hope you guys get that from each other as well. I hope you find a lot of support within the community. It's what it's all about. That's why it's really valuable. Okay, it needs a, a bit more work to tidy that up, but that is much better. Wait for that autofocus. Come on now. It doesn't want to do it, does it? There we go. That's better, isn't it? That is much better. I really like that. Some guys are saying here uh, some stuff. Uh, oh, Leslie, talk about the flower pots. Wow, that does sound pretty intense on the eyes, as well as just making sure that they all stay the same size. It must be really difficult to do lots of things identical to each other, especially when they're difficult. So, yeah, hats off to you. Uh, can't wait to see the finished product. Yeah, me neither. Uh, Jeff says, remember, with the bug um, of the three-foot rule, it should stand out on the table, but not up close. No, you're right. This is just one of those models that's a little bit bigger. Um, this isn't the standard bug size. It's just a little bit larger. So where the details here on the top of those plates, they're going to stand out a little bit more, even at that three-feet factor. I, th I think it's all going to boil down to... Um, 
how the lines follow each other. At the moment, it kind of looks like that the lines are meeting in the middle, doesn't it? It looks like the dark grey is meeting the the um, the light grey. But actually, they should be following. It, sh it should be that the the light grey lines give way to, you know, in the same pattern, give way to medium ones that then go into the dark grey ones. And then on these places, it should go into the black bits, you know. At the moment, it kind of looks like it's two sets. One set of dark grey and one set of light grey. And they just kind of go like, at each other. And that's not what I'm trying to do. I hope that makes sense. It might just be that I'm making myself look like a bit of an idiot. <laughs> live on the internet um, not the best place to do that got to wash my brush out it's all dried in there um, so yeah I'm, I'm hoping that when you stand away from a little bit you go like ah oh, that you know your eyes are automatically fooled um, it does on my trigon and on my carn effects um, here you can see that they're all nice and lovely and blended and whatever and that looks really cool um, you can see how big this is compared to the Khan effects. It's about a third of the size. So it's it's got some size to it. And they will be, you know, two, three, four of them. Um, so, yeah. They're going to look cool. It's just about getting there, isn't it? It's just the journey. Uh, other comments, wasn't there? Uh, Leslie says, Frank really is looking killer. Nicely done, dude. Thanks, man. If you've got any suggestions on how to achieve, I hope you all know what it is I'm trying to achieve. Um, but if you've got like suggestions, if you think I'm doing something wrong, tell me. I'll, I'll you know I'll give it a try. Practice on Frank. Perfect it on Be on on Becky. Who's Becky? On Betty. There's too many K and Frank. Frank and Betty. Frank and ooh, Betty. Right. So now what I'm doing is I'm just making the the edge there just a bit more opaque just you can see it's all a little bit fluffy in the middle I'll, I'll sort all that out another time I'm really happy with that that looks awesome as awesome as I think I'm gonna get it and, I, and I'm not too fond of the front here I think I need to start with the highlights work into the medium gray so what I might just do is is paint the whole um, the grays the dark gray and then all I've got to do then is work with blacks and um, lighter greys what i've been doing is using the the, the middle grey as my starting grey i think that's probably a little bit wrong perhaps so what i might do with betty is i might go and try that as a process it does mean blocking her all in again but cool whatever <laughs> um he says becky is the tune you haven't built or started painting yet She's waiting to come out. <laughs> um, uh, Jeff says, also being the top plate, the lighter colour should be the dominant colour. Yeah. Yeah. What is the dominant colour? I thought it was the mid grey. Maybe it's going to be something else now. I don't know. It sh yeah, it should be the middle grey. So I think maybe I need to cut this back a bit. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Um... Leslie says, oh yeah, the fact that so many different painting styles are out there always means that everyone's work is not only validated but appreciated. Thanks. Yeah, that's good. That's important. Even though I've just painted a tiny amount of my dudes, I'm going to leave it there for tonight. Shouting more tomorrow. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sometimes you just got to leave it, man. Right. Let's just, let's just get some paint on here. I can neaten up that little cornery bit down there as well. Cornery bit. That's the correct word. Co cornery bit. What time? You know, I've been I've been so focused on what I've been doing. I haven't even been keeping an eye on, on the show. I could have been three hours in there. Friday the thirteenth would make sense, right? Trying to make sure that both sides stay about even. pointy bit there tidy that up a bit there we go
Oh, went a bit heavy there, didn't I? I'll smudge that out a bit. Again, I'll wash the bristles out. Keep coming back with a nice moist brush. I think that's part of the key here as well. It's not necessarily a thinned paint, but it's a moist brush. Thinned paint so you don't like cake it onto the model, but a moist brush which helps the transfer of paint. I'm going to spend some time on this over the weekend as well, I think. I've got quite a bit to do over the weekend. Going to a friend's house for a dinner. That'll be really nice. There's going to be quite a few of us going as well. Friends from work, etc. And other friends. That'll be late on Sunday. I think I've got a bit of time on Sunday to spend on this. Tomorrow, going uh, to the city of Exeter to go do some rock climbing. I haven't been rock climbing for a long time, so it'll be nice to go and do some. It's one of my favourite things to do. So I won't have time tomorrow to do it, but I'll find some time over the next few days to really kind of get Frank's top plate at least in. Done, looking good. And like Jeff says, working out what that dominant colour is. Well, it's a bit weird working that way. I can't do it. It's a hair to my brain. A very good edge highlight there. <laughs> Not only have I got to be working on Frank over the weekend or over the next few days into the next week, I've also got to start work on a new game. I have friends over on uh, on a Wednesday evening. Generally, on a Wednesday evening, we play lots of war games, etc. We play whatever game kind of we we fancy at the time. We often go through phases, obviously, as as you, as you do. But we've decided that we're going to do some pen and paper role play games. Uh, it could be like D and D or something like that. We decided that D and D isn't what we want to play. We're actually going to play Warhammer Fantasy role play. This is a, uh, a pen and paper role play game, very much like D&D, but it's basically the uh, the fantasy version of Warhammer. We played it before, we really liked it, it's really good fun, really descriptive. And I wonder how many of you out there play role play games as well. It's one of those things that has a good crossover, lots of war gamers would probably play it. And lots of role players might actually play war games as well. But it's also one of those d dividers as well, people who don't play either or the other one, um, you know, they, they you know just like specialize if you like in their particular game i find that more with dnd &D players you get very hardcore dnd &D players i like all sorts of games so uh, i'm one of the guys that will just kind of have a go at everything um but i'm running the game so uh, i've got to kind of like come up with all these really cool um story arcs and things for my players some of those players are watching right now um, so i'm not going to go into detail what they are because it will ruin it for you and it'll be a shame If there's anybody out there watching right now who does play pen and paper play, uh, roleplay games, especially Warhammer Fantasy, I'd be really interested to hear from you. Um, so drop us a line on Facebook, private if you want to, on Discord, come and have a chat about it on Discord if you want. I'll be at the end of the show, I'll be on the, the after party if you like. Um, and just kind of like, you know, just, just get a little um, conversation going. I'm interested to hear about your story ideas. Do they have parallels into the tabletop? Do you, do you know? Do you, have you painted models of you know characters from your games and things? Roleplay game 
games can get quite a bad stick sometimes because it's what one of those things where this kind of nerd convention still sort of carries forwards and I, and I don't like it because it it it's your imagination running wild it's fantastic it's an interactive story it's like an interactive novel you know we all like our books i suppose we all like books right um we all like things like tolkien and things but but why because they're also visceral in their in their description set in a new you know a new little world form of escapism if you like whatever you like to get out of your stories whatever you like to get out of your novels but i like a role play game because it's an interactive version as the person writing it, often called the Games Master, or the Dungeon Master in Dungeons and Dragons, you start the story, but your players are a part of that, aren't they? And they, they, they kind of write this... You should be able to write a book by the end of your game. I love that as a concept. My lines aren't very narrow and pointy here. You'll have to come back in and neaten it up. Not doing a very good job right now. It's been a struggle this evening, I'm, I'm going to be honest. But I've enjoyed it. I can see what I'm trying to achieve, it's, it's just difficult getting there. Anybody else feel like that sometimes? Feels like I'm just walking uphill. Right. Uh, Leslie says, oh cool, hope you guys have a really good time. And honestly, I've not really played a full-blown RPG game. Um, yeah, I've been playing them for years and years and years and lots of different types of games. It's just, a, it doesn't, my life isn't all Warhammer. I play all sorts of games with miniatures. Warhammer is just, you know, it's a, it's one of the dominating game industries out there, isn't it? Warhammer, Warhammer 40,000. Now there's, of course, Age of Sigmar as well, which is just a newer version of Warhammer. Um, but it has its own aesthetic, its own feel. Um, and and I, I really like them. Um, but I've played sci-fi games. I've, I've played loads of things. I've played horror games. They can be really fun. I've played some really high horror. Um, so, yeah, it, it depends what you want to get out of it. And every group, every you know, group of players has their own sort of vibe, feel, and, you know, it's just interesting. And I wonder, I just kind of wonder about the parallel between the two. Do, do, is there a point where in your little gaming community that you might have or, or know, um, is there a bleed through between the two? Do you, do some of them play or do you all play role play games together? Does that kind of affect some of your games and narratives and things? I find it interesting. I feel like I haven't got a lot done. All, all I've done is highlights on the top. It's taking me two hours to do that. So it feels like a fight. It feels like a, it's been a real challenge, but I feel like it's been progress. It's one of those things where I've just got to sit there and just sort of absorb it, take it in and go, oh, that, that would look better. I think on this side here, I think I need to bring these highlights up a bit higher. Might be fighting against the dark gray there, but if I've got to redo it, I've got to redo it. But it's looking pretty neat. I've got a lot of reflection from my lights. Let's just turn my lights away there. There we go. Stop rolling, brush. Crikey. It's looking, it's looking better. What do you guys think? Interestingly, it looked like there was a lot of glare off the front of it there, but that was actually the highlights working for me anyway. That's cool. Looks all right, doesn't it? Dark grey just needs, yeah, working out a little bit. I need to highlight that edge. Quite like how the highlight there on the edge works. We'll, we'll work it out. We'll sort it out. It looks a little tiger stripey, and I think I can solve that. I think I can, I can work that out. It looks cool. It looks cool. Um, let's see what some of the comments are going in. Uh, Leslie says, I think the shell looks awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah, flower pots. I'm sorry, flower pots have been the theme of your <laughs> doom this evening. Uh, staff says so. Decided to play a priestly wizardy warrior priest. A priestly warrior, a priestly wizardy warrior priest with 20 skills and 18 talents. 
Let's say that one more time. A priestly, wizardy warrior priest. <laughs> There's a lot to unpack there, isn't there? Uh, Frank looks cool. Nice. Like it. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. Um, I'm sure he'll get there. I'm sure he will. The more I do on the carapaces on my, on my Tyranids, the more I think I should be doing. Not so heavily with patterns but a bit more picking up details on, on a lot more of the fleshy bits uh, but I don't really know how to do that without going over the top I'm not a professional painter I'm not that good so I feel that if I start doing stuff I'm just adding so much effort to something that's probably not going to look that good um, as much as I want it to while I've still got boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff to do so there's that internal conflict with me um you know what's going on in my head what do i do how do i achieve this um i want to obviously make it look super stunning but i'm not going to be there um <laughs> staff says i think show off not jealous at all um it's, it's nothing to shout about i really like what i do um and he, and he really looks cool a lot of it's come together by accident I like it. It's, it's, it's cool. You know, I'm, I'm not great. There's a lot on me here that I remember painting on this Carnifex. I go, wow, that looks really cool. And now I look at it and go, that looks rubbish. <laughs> it's the top of the smokestacks on there. They they don't look like I finished them. Makes me th sit there and think, did I even finish them? There's parts of me that think, no. Parts of me that I, you know, that I know that I've always got to come back and, and have another go. You know, an artist's work is, is never complete, is it? We're, we're always looking at it, trying to perfect it. I can do better, but it's getting there. Anyway, look, we're at the end of the show. We're, we're getting very close to the end of the show. Um, so I'm, I'm going to stop here for now. Normally I go over a little bit. We've got a few minutes to go before the end, but whatever. Um, yeah, let's just come away from here, shall we? been an interesting night i didn't realize i was going to be bogged down so much um that happens right that happens sometimes we we could, we could be working on something we get so diligently involved that it didn't go how i thought i thought i was going to have a lot more like on the legs and things done i thought it was going to be like halfway through a lot of that process but um no all i've done really is mess with some spikes on one plate for two hours do you see what i mean about that kind of uphill struggle I think I'm just in danger of repeating myself if I if I start talking about it anymore. I just got to do it. I just got to crack on and just when it looks rubbish, go back over it, start again, or, or neaten it up, tidy it up. Jess says if you need detail on the top plate, you could add spikes or something with milliput. Yeah, you're right. I could. That might actually be really cool. I feel like maybe for these guys it's a bit late for that because I've done so much work anyway. If I started adding spikes, I'd have to kind of like blend the texture in, you know, kind of like smooth them out, sand them or whatever, and that would of course damage a lot of the you know work that I've already done. And I feel like that would be going backwards. But yes, you're right, especially on some of the bigger models, uh, the Trigon, who is behind me somewhere over there. Um, some really big plates, lots of it, and because the Trigon's like this sort of size, that'd be really good for it as well. I'll get there, I've just got to persevere, right? Sometimes as well, even though what I like about my Tyranids is that the contrast between a lot of the colours, even within the greys themselves, can be quite stark. I'm adding more greys in there to kind of add more gradient, um, so that it looks more kind of, you know, they blend together a bit more rather than having three i've now got four which looks great i sometimes wonder if i could add like a filter uh, i do have um oh dropped it uh the black filter which i use specifically formulated for the airbrush i've used that before i used it on the Khan effect do you remember i said that as an ink um it stays wet for longer so that you can actually wet blend it which i did by complete accident <coughs> excuse me but it's a filter is it's not designed for how i use it it is designed for adding slight subtle um changes to the hue so it might be that i could just put a very small quantity in the airbrush and hopefully have a very steady trigger hand and not blast it all over the place but i could just um sort of introduce uh, soften it down and blend them all together by adding the sort of black filter to it um i can see people going uh, yes do it but i think you're saying yes do it to adding lots of spikes and not the black filter that's something i could do um i've got to be quite accurate with it um in various ways accurate with the trigger so that you know i'm, I'm pushing the trigger down for airflow and i'm pulling the trigger back for the quantity of, of paint or ink that comes out 
um, and it's very easy to kind of go too far in either direction, put too much air into it, and what you're kind of, you know, firing out suddenly goes everywhere and then you realize that you've kind of got a lot of overspray um which if i'm trying to avoid putting it excuse me on the yellows um would be very tricky to do um and also if i go too far by um pulling trigger back then i could blast out too much paint in one area and suddenly i haven't got a filter anymore i've got a big inky blob so if i was to do this um i would certainly want to uh, varnish my model so that um i could do a lot of cleanup on it and being an ink it, it stays wet like i say so i could clean it up but there's a lot to consider there isn't there um things to think about right maybe it doesn't need a filter maybe it is worth varnishing it all down giving it a quick go going oh that doesn't work clean it all up or go actually this is exactly what it needs um that's the fun of it all. When, where, where does it end? I keep on finding fancy new things um, to use and paint with. So in my head, it's just like, there's so many ideas. I just need to go, here's one, do it. And if it looks bad, it looks bad. Um, Leslie says, spike, 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 spikes. Yeah, yeah, uh, do you know, now you said it, I probably should ever get make a spikes. I've got a whole box of Tyranids over there that I need to paint, Leslie. Shut up, all right? <laughs> just laughing at you. Um, do you know what? I'm done for the night. Um, thanks for your company. I feel like I really needed it. It's been very valuable to have you guys there kind of cheering me on and just kind of talking amongst yourselves. I'm really looking forward to um, seeing pictures on Facebook of everything that you've painted today. If you want to show the stuff that you've painted, of course, you don't have to. Uh, but if you are so inclined, please do share with me and the rest of the community pictures of, of what it is that you've been painting recently, tonight, etc. Uh, I, I do take a lot of joy in seeing what it is that you guys have been working on. Uh, and I say we've had new subscribers recently, new followers. They've been putting up pictures on Discord, on Facebook, and, I, and I, there's some fantastic stuff out there. There really, really is. Uh, one person who I forget to mention uh, recently is, uh, has been Wet Palette Miniatures, uh, one of the professional painters that follows us. Um, I've been talking with uh, Wet Palette Miniatures uh, in the background between shows um, to kind of work together to create a, you know, to create a collaborative work. Um, we've been waiting to the new year to talk. They sent me a message a little while ago, and if you're watching right now, guys, I'm so sorry. I read it. I just haven't replied yet because I've been so busy or asleep on the sofa. <laughs> Um, I apologize. I, I am going to get to you either this evening after the show or tomorrow, um, like probably after I get back from my rock climbing adventures. Um, so if you're watching this now or you're watching it a little bit later on between now and then, uh, I'm so sorry. I forgot about you. Genuine mistake. I just, you know, object in permanence. Uh, if I'm not directly looking at it, it doesn't exist. So I'm really, really sorry about that. I will get on to that. But for those of you that don't know about that collaboration, some exciting work to come around the corner. No massive changes to the format of easy the, the the painting show will always be here the painting club sorry will always be here but we just kind of wanted to kind of stretch out a little bit do something a little bit different together um as an additional thing maybe as a limited time to help each other's kind of end products here the goal with easy eight is to you know create a community where you can kind of paint together it's a painting club there's nothing to dress it up in you know um and wet palette miniatures is a painting service but we want to do something together to just kind of have a bit of fun and kind of help promote each other's work. And that's what this community is all about. It's about sharing that and, and we're going to have some fun and do some stuff together. Uh, we've got some ideas and that's what we're discussing at the moment. If you've got any ideas on what you want to see from that collaboration or, you know, from others, then we're all ears. We, you know, we would love to hear about what you want to see because we do this for you, right? That's, that's what it's all about and, and for ourselves, obviously. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Um, Leslie's off but looks of it as always been an amazing show cheers buddy cheers guys take care nice to see you again Leslie take care stay safe mate won't you um, yeah that's that's yeah me if you like what we do here at Easy Eight, um, it's normally a bit smoother <laughs> I feel um, if you like what we do please do consider sharing spread the word of easy eight go tell a friend tell someone you know at work who probably you discovered recently paints models and they would like to join a community that's what the show is all about please do let them know about easy eight uh, and consider uh, subscribing to the show um because i would really like it if you did the more subscribers the better i feel about myself and my ego inflates um and the more subscribers uh, mean that it gets bigger and better so please do subscribe if you haven't already uh tell a friend get them to subscribe bully them into submission i normally i go don't do that no do it 
subscribe i want i want more subscribers now thank you very much uh before i go um, i said last week that if i had more than 50 or up to 50 likes between the two weeks i would give you a little tour um of the studio to show you how messy it is uh that happened um so i will be over the next few days doing a little live video on facebook so come and join me over there um and i will do a live thing um i'll just hang around for a little while so if you want to come and talk to me you can if you like and i will show you around my very very messy studio which i've actually tidied a little bit recently anyway look, that's enough from me i'm going to be over on discord at the easy after party immediately after the show so if you fancy coming over and having a chat with me you can you can come and join in the video or you can just type if you want to and we could just chat a little bit rubbish while i clean up over here above and we do a little bit more work to frank it's been a lovely evening thank you very much for your company my name's danny says it right down there this is easy Eight online painting club you guys have been fantastic i will see you next week until then stay safe be kind and keep on painting i'll see you soon cheers now bye bye Thanks, Danny, says Stafford. I see you there. <laughs> Push the button, Danny. Wow, Friday the 13th. That was a struggle. That, that was really difficult. Time for a beer. <laughs>